Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 5 of physics super important questions. Okay, so this is related to animation, the whole module is related to animation. So we will be discussing what is the physics involved in animation, the frame rate and the time and how the uh, position changes in, with that uh, with respect to frame and everything. We will be discussing the uh, most repeated questions from the exam point of view. So uh, before starting, please do like and subscribe, it helps make more videos like this. So without wasting more time, let's get started. The first question is describe jumping and parts of jump. Okay. So what is a jump? Jump means from one position uh, to the air again to the land. Okay. So a jump action includes a takeoff, free movement through the air and a landing. So three things are here. Takeoff, free movement through the air and landing. Okay. So part of a jump. Five parts are there in the jump. First is crouch. A squatting position taken as a preparation for jump. Okay. Like we'll be sitting like this for jumping. So that is the uh, first thing which is crouch. Okay. Second thing after that is takeoff. Okay. Character pushes up past uh, the leg with the feet still in ground okay this position that is the takeoff okay and in air it is the third one which is the air and the fourth one is landing just uh, landed it here without uh, the uh, crouching of the legs and the last one is crouching of the legs from here okay so five uh, things are here and uh, there are there are different heights also okay push height is nothing but height between center of gravity in the crouch position to the center of gravity in the takeoff position okay so it is a crouch position it is a takeoff position the center of gravity changes from here to here that is that height is called as the uh, push height the jump height is the between the takeoff to the position of the air position of the uh, takeoff to the position of the air this height is called as the jump height and again the stop height is the uh, center of gravity in the landing position to the crouch position landing position crouch position this height is called as the uh, the stop height okay and jump height is 1.2 meter so jump time will be 2 h by g okay that is 0.5 seconds in this case uh, if you uh, substitute 1.2 here we will be getting 0.5 seconds and uh, this is at the 30 fps it will be 0 0.5 into 30 which is 15 frames okay so 30 into uh, for the 30 frame per second means in one second 30 frames are there since 0 0.5 seconds is required for the jump that means half of this uh, frames are required for the jump which is 15 frames the next question is uh, discuss ceiling features of normal distribution using bell curves okay what is a normal distribution normal distribution will look like this okay and this is the mean value which is present here and the left half is this and the right half is this okay so the normal curve is symmetrical it is uh, the normal probability curve is symmetrical around the vertical axis okay this is the vertical axis it is symmetrical around the vertical axis okay and uh, the symmetry uh, the ordinate in the central axis will influence the size shape and slope okay this is the size shape and slope it denotes what is at the peak here okay and uh, it is identical at the left and the right and the middle central point of the mirror images as shown in the figure okay and the normal curve is unimodal only one maximum point is there so it is unimodal it is bilateral total area under the curve is 50 percent of the curve left to the left and 50 percent right to the right this is 50 percent here 50 percent here okay so uh, this is one of the uh, representation of the um, normal bell curve and normal curve is a mathematical model that we uh, used in behavioral sciences uses a measurement scale it uh, the unit of the scale is one sigma okay the unit standard deviation and standard deviation also there are three types of deviation 68 percent 95 percent and 99.7 percent within one two and three standard deviation of the mean okay this is also another example 99 percent uh, 95 percent and uh, 50 uh, 68 percent okay moving on to the third super important question which is discuss the timings in linear linear motion and uniform motion and slow in and slow out okay linear uniform and slow in and slow out so here the what is a linear motion it is just a normal motion okay and slow in slow out is also there we will be discussing see timing animation refers to the duration of an action how much time an action is happening that is called as timing how much time is required for an action that is called as a timing of an uh, timing animation okay so in timing animation consists of placing objects character in a particular location in specific frames to give the illusion of the motion so suppose that in the first frame uh, something uh, ball is here second frame it went here third frame fourth frame fifth frame like that if we uh, play multiple frames in a second it will look like it's going in a motion okay so what is the line of action line of action which indicates visual flow of action of that single image so if a ball is from here 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 this is the line of action okay and the first one is uniform motion it is the easiest to animate because the distance travel by the frames always remains the same means this much this much this much this much it's going okay like in this image you can see right this much this much this much this much all are uniform so it is called as a uniform motion okay so the next one is the ease out speed up okay speed up motion 
speed up means initially the distance will be lesser and it will eventually become more because in one second it is covering more distance because it is speeding up the third one is the uh, ease in and slow down in slow down first it will be more and it is slowing down so the distance between each of these consecutive frames will be lesser okay and ease out and ease in that is the combination of both so it will be the middle part which will be speed and the uh, corner parts it will be slower and the graph is also given here okay Moving on to the fourth supplement question, we have explained the uh, odd rule and odd rule multiplies with a suitable examples. Okay, so when acceleration is constant, okay, acceleration is constant means always speed is increasing one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six like that. Odd rule is used. Okay, simple pattern of odd numbers to uh, time the frames. Between consecutive frames, distance moved by the object is a multiple of an odd number. Like that, we will estimate it. Okay, like that, what we will do, we will estimate it. Okay, so it will be in the order of one, three, five, seven like that, or seven, five, three, one in the uh, decreasing order. Okay and the odd rule is a uh, multiplying system based on the smallest distance traveled between the two frames in a sequence so if it travels very less it will be considered as one if it travels little more it will be considered as three if more it is five then more it is seven so this is the odd odd uh, number rule okay Moving on to the last question of this module, we have the explain discuss the modeling probability for a proton decay. Okay, we have to uh, find out the probability of a proton decay. For that, we'll do our modeling. Now, proton decay is a rare type of radioactive decay of the nuclei containing excess protons, in which a proton is simply ejected from the nucleus. This is the nucleus, and the proton when it, it is decayed, it will come out of the nucleus. Mechanism of the decay process very similar to alpha decay. Proton decay is also a quantum tunneling process. Okay, this is the key point you need to write. It's a quantum tunneling process okay so modeling the probability of uh, proton decay okay so proton decay is suppose that there is n uh, number of protons which is to be modeled by the decay equation okay so the equation will be n is equal to n naught into e power minus lambda by uh, minus lambda t n naught is the initial number of protons e is raised to minus lambda t t is the time taken and lambda is a radioactive decay constant by using this formula we can calculate at time t how much uh, protons are remaining okay so if t is uh, minus 10 power minus 33 per year the proton will decay in a year okay this is the uh, equation okay and uh, since the decay is very small and cons uh, it's the constant uh, lambda is so small the exponential can be represented by the first two terms of the exponential series that means e power minus lambda t can be represented as 1 minus lambda t itself because if this is very less it can be directly considered here so the equation will become n is equal to n naught into 1 minus lambda t okay and here also it is the same thing and uh, on the recent observations in uh, Cherkinov detector it is a most sensitive detector which has 7.5 to 10 power 33 uh, protons okay available and so n naught minus n is equal to n naught into lambda because uh, of this equation if we expand it we'll get this equation here so we'll apply the values we'll get 7.5 here okay so the number of decays which has not been decayed is 7.5 okay and uh, also, this is another formula which is the Poisson's distribution function, which tells us that probability of zero observation for the decay is 0 0.05. That means uh, the proposed lifetime of 10 to 33 years is too short. Okay. That's all for the module 5. And uh, don't miss any of these questions. And please do like and subscribe. It helps me make more like this. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.